Good evening. Welcome to Stars of Jazz, presented tonight by Budweiser, the king of beers. For the purist, that sort of jazz fan who thrives on straight, undiluted Dixieland music as it was originally played in New Orleans, well, it's been a long six weeks, a very long six weeks since the appearance of Kid Ory on the program's opening night. Well, we may not appease the purist this evening, but we'll try to meet him halfway. We'll compromise a little bit. And we'll do it by exploring that facet of jazz known as Chicago style. The exponents of same are a group of Columbia recording artists headed by an active veteran of the Chicago school, Julian Clifton Matlock, known only to his intimates as Matty. The presence of the Rampart Street Praters will be enhanced by the appearance of still another star of jazz, one of the most important figures in the story of this particular type of music, Mr. Jack Teagarden. And as a special kind of a surprise in-person guest, a man known as the king of jazz, Paul Whiteman. Here then is the sound of jazz at its turning point, Chicago style, the Rampart Street Praters. Tonight, as we mentioned earlier, we have Paul Whiteman, the King of Jazz, as a special guest on our program. As a very special host for this evening's festivities, we have the King of Beers. Well, that would be Budweiser, of course, and this would be It's Time to Be Heard From. What's in a label? It pays to read labels. Wonderful, Mr. Pegatru. Pettigrew. Yes. Mr. Pegatru, you've correctly named all the people attending the banquet and the date, 1893. Now, you have the choice of taking the deed to the Brooklyn Bridge or of trying for the really big prize. I'll continue. And now for the question. What were the ingredients of the principal beverage served? 
A delightful brew composed of the choicest hops, rice, and best barley malt. Rice? Would you care to reconsider? Comprising the carefully selected and proven ingredients... Rice! ...of world-renowned Budweiser lager beer. By golly, it does! Congratulations, Mr. Pettigrew. You've won the Great Lakes. And you, too, will appreciate the distinctive, delicious taste of world-renowned Budweiser, the king of beers. Welcome to the program, Mr. Pettigrew and Budweiser beer. Everyone enjoys the distinctive, delicious taste of Bud. So won't you do yourself a real favor? Pick up a handy six-pack of Budweiser beer tomorrow. And so what about Chicago jazz? What brought it on? What was its background, and why is it different? Well, back in 1917, when the authorities in New Orleans stepped in and shut down Storyville, the musicians had to move on. In this case, they moved up, that is, up the river, to the big cities of the north. Most of them moved to Chicago, and they brought their music with them. New Orleans giants like King Oliver and Louis Armstrong led the way, and the Windy City began to listen. Chicago, that sprawling giant of constant change and transient population, of wide open living and raucous behavior. Well, Chicago needed a music to fit its mood. The emissaries from the South filled that need at places like the Red Mill, the Savoy, Kelly Stable, and Dreamland. Among the listeners was a group of teenagers from Chicago's West Side who were to help share the destiny of the city's own particular kind of jazz. They were called the Austin High Kids from Austin High School, inspired by recordings of the New Orleans Rhythm Kings and Vic Spiderbeck. Well, they put aside their school books and began to play. Dick and Jimmy McPartland, Davey Tuff, Bud Freeman, Frank Teschmacher, thus became influential in adapting what had been mainly a Negro music form into a field for all musicians. They helped change the music, too, and that's when Chicago-style jazz came into its own. To the traditional instrumentation of trombone, clarinet, trumpet, and rhythm, they added a new voice, that of the saxophone. They altered the tempo of the music as the New Orleans two-beat began to give way to a smoother and steadier 4-4 four -four time. Chicago style had really arrived. It's been going strong ever since, too, with men like those here tonight, all key figures in its growth and development and popularity. The major exponent of the Chicago style is Matty Matlock. For all of his musical heritage, though, he still knows what it means to miss New Orleans, and he'll prove that right now.
Vernon, Texas isn't the most likely place in the world to have fostered an outstanding jazz musician, let alone a whole family of them. But the Tea Gardens of Vernon were a very musical crew. Charlie played trumpet, Norma studied piano, young Cub took up the drums, and big brother Jack taught himself the trombone when he was only seven years old. The advent of Jack Tea Garden on the jazz scene in the late 20s brought on a new style to jazz singing and trombone playing. You can't exactly classify Tea Garden's style, but he's been called a jazz man with the range and flexibility of any trombonist of any idiom time. Now, one man who recognized the force and facility of Jack Tea Garden's horn is Paul Whiteman. The title, The King of Jazz, was bestowed on Whiteman largely because of the many friends, jazzmen, and all the famous jazz men who had passed through the ranks of Mr. Paul Whiteman's band. Fix Biderbeck, Red Narvo, the Dorsey Brothers, and Joe Venuti received their first wide audience with Whiteman's orchestra. In the middle 30s, the three T's, Jack and Charlie T. Garden and Frankie Trombauer, were key soloists with the band. We'll meet Paul Whiteman in person, but first, let's meet Mr. Jack T. Garden. From Jack T. Garden's performance of Lover, we move now to a fast action sequence designed especially for lovers of fine beers, the finest of which, of course, is Budweiser, King of Beers. The Budweiser label is truly your introduction to What's real beer. What's in a label? The Budweiser label tells a story. Last weekend, while puttering around my stage... Why don't you watch where you're going, you Sunday driver? You were way over the white line. That thing belongs in a junkyard. I beg your pardon, sir. Don't you, sir, me? Let me see your lawnmower operator's license. It, it must be in my other coat. Well, won't you step inside and we can talk this over? Head of grew, this careless driving's got to stop. It just... Hey, bud! Oh, you mean the world-renowned. Yes, world-renowned Budweiser Lager Beer. Pettigrew, I always said you were a man of good taste. Yeah, thank you. As the Budweiser label states, made from the choicest hops, rice, and best barley malt, it's the king of beers, king size or regular. Budweiser label is truly your introduction to real beer flavor. So prove it to yourself. Just pick up a six-pack of Budweiser tomorrow. Now you can enjoy Bud for less than a penny a can more than regular beers. 
Paul Whiteman played a tremendously important paternal role in the development of jazz artists. He well earned these nicknames, nicknames such as Pops and Fado, names as accepted as Babe for George Herman Ruth, Lindy for Charles Lindbergh. And under Pops Whiteman, jazzmen like Jack Teagarden were heard across the land. Jackson? Yes, sir, Pops? Well, I want to tell you, this is the night, and anybody that likes jazz at all would have to say, Truly, my cup of kicks is running over this evening. Well, it sure is good to be with you, Bob. Oh, it's good to hear that type of music. We don't hear enough of it. Of course, it took me back to the days with you fellas when we had the three T's. Oh, I was some bunch, wasn't Yeah, it? poor Frankie's uh, joined up with that good band upstairs with Mr. Beiderbeck and all the fellas. Well, they got a good one. Yeah, and they'll be happy up there. And, of course, little Charlie, I heard him this afternoon, your brother. That was the three T's, the two tea gardens and trombar. Well, I'm really Charlie's proud of him. playing really great. And of course, we often hear the younger generation compare who ought to be the big spider becker today and they name one trumpet player or another. But for me, I still say Charlie's the man. Well, I'm proud of him. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fade out of here. I just noticed when they had those pictures up there, I think I was just as pretty as that good bottle of Bud. So I'm going to get out of the way now and let Mr. <laughs> Troop take over. I'll duck a roo right under the camera. Thank you, Bob. Thank you very much. Well, our great thanks to Paul Whiteman for a pop's eye view of jazz in the heyday of the 30s. Now, Mr. T, shall we wander down to Basin Street? Won't you come along with me? Along the Mississippi We'll take a boat To the land of dreams Steam down the river down to New Orleans A band there to meet us to greet us You'll see the place Where the folks all meet A heaven on earth They call it Basin Street Basin Street It's the street Where all good friends Always meet Just how much it really means Glad to be Yes, a where Welcome streets Welcome me And where I tend to Lose my base The decade of the 30s saw a new form of jazz emerge. It was a thing called swing. The big bands of Benny Goodman, the Dorseys, Glenn Miller, and Duke Ellington expressed that feeling of jazz in ensemble terms. That is, groups of instruments voiced the ideas that had been the province of the jazz soloist. And one big band stood out as an incubator of jazz greats, the Ben Pollock organization. Goodman, Miller, T. Garden, Harry James, they and dozens of others served their apprenticeship with Pollock. When the Pollock Band broke up in 1935, it was taken over by Bob Crosby. 
And a very unique approach to big name jazz began to take form. The Bob Crosby Band pioneered in using Dixieland jazz as a vehicle for a full-sized orchestra. Two beat became an integral part of the Crosby style. And record crowds, Chicago's Black Hawk restaurant attested to the appeal of this big band, Dixieland. About 1935, we organized a band under Rockville O'Keefe. Did a few years around the country of the dart system. And, uh, well, we had a few great guys in there. Eddie Miller, Ray Baduke, Happy Lamar, Gil Roden. I guess we had about 10 of us. There's got a few in the band here tonight. There's Eddie Miller here. Well, there's a couple of the boys in the back. There's Phil Stevens. He worked with the band for a while. Nick Patool, George Van Epps, Stanley Reitzman, Eddie Miller, Abe Lincoln, real name Abe Lincoln, and there's Clyde Hurley, the old alumnus of the band. <clears throat>
Scotty Matlock, his Rampart Street Craters, and Hindustan, a number featuring Mr. Abe Lincoln on trombone from my hometown way back in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So we hope that you certainly enjoyed our excursion through Chicago jazz this evening. We hope it's whet your musical appetite for more. If it has, you'll find a feast of happy sounds by the Rampart Street Craters on Columbia Long Plain Recordings. The tunes heard tonight, plus many more, are on this album, Dixieland, My Dixieland, and on Rampart Street and Van. For the hi-fi disciples of the portable player contingent, these Columbia albums represent jazz at its recorded best. And what of next week? Well, on hand will be Schweppes Quinine Water, and here is Commander Whitehead to tell you of this authentic tonic mixer. Now wait, don't tell me. Was it Hong Kong? Beirut? Cairo, perhaps? <laughs> Guess again, Commander Whitehead. London, it was London. I'll give you a hint. You were having a tonic, and you were warning the waiter to make jolly well sure he mixed it with Schweppes. But that might have been anywhere. Schweppes quinine water is famous all over the world. In those days, you used to say it was impossible to mix a tonic without Schweppes. It still is. No other mixer has Schweppes bittersweet flavor and rare effervescence. Effervescent? You used to call those little bubbles Schweppervescent. Schweppervescent, of course. Those remarkable little bubbles that last the whole drink through. Did you know that Schweppes quinine water is now bottled here in the States from the imported elixir? Oh, but do tell me, where did we meet? Was it Paris? A week from tonight, our stars of jazz will be modern clarinetist Buddy DeFranco and his quintet, who are currently at Zardy's Jazz Land in Hollywood. And as they used to say on band remotes, stepping into the blue vocal spotlight will be Lucianne Polk, an exceptional jazz singer. Me, I'll be at the keynoter Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Good night. something new, a mentholated cigarette that everyone can enjoy. It's new Spud.